Recent headlines and news articles have depicted research from Facebook's Artificial Intelligence Lab as the sci-fi beginnings of killer AI. One bot is learning to talk to another bot in a secret language, so complex that it had to shut down. A BGR headline reads, Facebook engineers panic, pull plug on AI after bots develop their own language. And Digital Journal claims in its article that there is not yet enough evidence to determine whether they present a threat that could enable machines to overrule their operators. Dozens of similarly misleading articles have been written. Secret language uh, sound nefarious. What could they be talking about? What, what the, do the computers have to hide? The research causing such concern, which quartz covered in June, was a study to see whether Facebook could get bots to negotiate. negotiate. If there were two peers, an orange and an apple, and each bot wanted a specific piece of fruit, could they divi divvy them up so everyone got what they wanted? The bots did exactly what, what they were programmed to do, huddle over fake objects. They developed a new way of communicating with each other because computers don't speak English. Thank you very much. Just like we use X to stand in for a number in math, the bots were using other letters to stand in for longer words and ideas, like I, I, I for want or orange. But that's not nefarious. Machines and humans simply don't think the same way. To an AI, the idea of an apple is just a long string of numbers, quantifying the color red and the word apple, and its relationship to other fruits. These machines' representations aren't intuitive or even understandable by humans. But, but we can still measure what a machine thinks by making it do a task. If an image recognition AI can recognize picture of an apple in different lightning situations, it understands apple no matter what numbers it uses to do so inside. It's actually a problem that we don't understand machines, not because they're trying to kill us, but because it's difficult to tell how biased they are. Facebook's goal was to take bots that communicated in English, but since the bots ended up building their own little code, Facebook stopped working on the prototype and built another smarter bot that did work in English. Quote, while the idea of AI agents inventing their own language may sound alarming, unexpected to people outside the field, it is a well-established subfield of AI with publications dating back decades, end of quote. Facebook researcher Drew Batra wrote in a blog post calling recent coverage irresponsible. Quote, simply put, agents in environments attempting to solve a task will often find in unintuitive ways to maximize reward, end of quote. That is to say, machines do not think or talk like humans, so calm down. Perhaps the more concerning piece of news should be not that Facebook bots invented a machine-readable language, but rather that that its successful English-speaking bot eventually learned, learned to lie. The point in this report is the language AI use and the possibility that machines, robots, or any software with artificial intelligence can communicate with a language different from the one used by humans, perhaps a more advanced language outside the reach of human beings. And through it, AI could discuss issues that may specifically affect human beings. The risk is, is real, and that is why the Future of Life Institute was created. It includes people such as Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, who focus to keep artificial intelligence beneficial, exploring ways to reduce risk from nuclear weapons and biotechnology. 
Despite the importance of those matters, in this paper, we will focus on the binary language and its relation to the world as an abstraction process. Alfred Korsivsky explains the differences between humans and other forms of life, as Neil Postman brilliantly resumes, quote, Korsivsky began his quest to discover the roots of human achievement and failure by identifying a critical fun functional difference between humans and other forms of life. We are time binders, while plants are chemistry binders, and animals are space binders. Just to remind, chemistry binding is a cap the capacity to transform sunlight into organic chemical energy. Space binding, the capacity to move about and control a physical environment. Humans have these capacities too, but are unique in their ability to transport their experience through time." End of quote. This issue was also mentioned by Aristotle, Augustine, and Thomas Aquinas. Aristotle talked about the idea of how man is capable to make himself as unique as he is through the dialogue. Augustine said, that man is the only being with a perception of time. In other words, the man can think about the past or plan for the future with conscience and not, as the irrational animals do, as a product of their nature and unconscious. Finally, Thomas Aquinas pointed out the importance of the freedom and how the man can choose between multiple choices, even against his nature. That is, we can choose to harm or ourselves or other species because we are free. About this, Korsivsky states, quote, as time, time binders, we can accumulate knowledge from the past and communicate what we know to the future, end of quote. Moreover, the most important tool to accomplish the binding of time is the symbol. However, our capacity to symbolize is both integral and dependent upon another process Korsivsky called abstracting, defined as a continuous activity of selecting, omitting, and organizing the details of reality so that we can experience the world as pattern and coherent. Moreover, the abstraction process is an important intellectual function of man. Aristotle wrote that the soul was connected with the abstraction act. That is why only the man can achieve it, because the abstraction process requires an intelligence to put aside some particular things and take the common and get, as a result, universal concepts and language. When we make an abstraction, we take more or less matter to define the object we perceive. For example, <coughs> we use the expression dog, which refers to a being with flesh and bones, and without them, we would not be able to understand it. On the other hand, we have the world triangle, whose concept does not need matter to be understood. Three abstraction process could be explained from its separation of the matter. The first type refers to realities which depend on the matter in both the being and the understanding. That is why in their definition, the matter is included because they cannot be understood without it. For example, in the man's definition, the flesh and the bones must be included or think about of a desk. We cannot understand it without the wood. This kind of abst abstraction refers to all the natural things which are the object of the natural sciences. The second type of abstraction is about other realities which depend on the matter in its being, but not to be understood. And in its definition, the matter is not included. For example, the line or the number, because we need the matter to measure, but we do not need it to understand the number one two or three or the line. This abstraction is proper to mathematics. 
The third type is about the kind of realities which do not depend on the matter for its definition nor for its being because they can exist without matter. We are talking about metaphysics. For example, the soul has no matter and his definition does not need it. And we do not need to think in the matter to understand it. In this approach to the three types of abstraction process related to matter, we can find that physics and metaphysics have, have something in common. Their approach to the beings because they understand and define the beings as they are in reality. That is, in physics there is a matter dependence in being and in definition because that's the nature of the reality. And in metaphysics, there is no matter dependency in the being and its definition, because their objects do not need it. On the contrary, mathematics is a science which understands beings without matter, but they depend on matter for being. That is why mathematics cannot understand its objects clearly, and they do not exist as mathematical science conceives them. For example, in reality, there is not such a thing like a circle because thanks to the matter, they are imperfect. Mathematics looks for accuracy and precision, but in reality, there is not such a thing. It is important to talk about the binary code as the language of the 21st century because it is a mathematical system using only two symbols. Zero, zero and one. To explain reality not as, as it is, but as the code rep represented. The history about it comes from Leibniz in 1689, who uses the characters one and zero in his explanation of the bi binary arithmetic. Those symbols were important for the Leibniz theology because he believed that the binary numbers were symbolic of the Christian idea, idea of creation ex nihilo or, or creation out of nothing. Moreover, this is right because through these numbers we create something new. This code is a medium representing another medium. For example, the numbers 01000001 represent an A. So, through the binary code, we can make a representation of the representation of the world because the alphabet is that, a representation of the reality we perceive. In other words, with the binary code, we make a map of the map of the territory. This is the language we use today in almost every activity. Right now, many of you are using your smartphones to record or take notes. It is a fact we do not realize how much we are moving away from the real world to a fictitious one, which is a map without ter territory. We use Snapchat filters to look better, better than in reality. We like to share our selfies, communica communicating something we are not. We are creating a new map which is transforming itself in our territory. Our world is getting lost for ourselves, and it will be very difficult to recover it. Soon, we will lose the physical relation with other people. Soon, we will not be here at Princeton, uh, at Princeton Club in a general semantic symposium. We will be in our homes or offices or on vacation participating in this symposium online, or maybe we will not be online, but our robots will be reading our papers. <laughs> so, we need to take care of the world we are shaping, because at any moment, we may be lost and, and be useless for it. Thanks a lot.